And as you guys know, I compete a lot. I love to compete. Um, I love to race. Um, uh, I've done 16 full Ironmans, including Kona uh, World Championships and also the Norsemen and Ironmans all over the world and uh, half Ironmans, about nine, eight or nine of those and, uh, and just little races here and there every day, cycling, running, um, and swimming and triathlon. So I use this, you guys, the rowing machine as 80% of my training. Now I've been written, uh, I've been uh, featured in Triathlete Magazine a couple times. Uh, I've been in um, the Wall Street Journal uh, this, this just a few months ago um, at the turn of the, uh, the new year about how to use rowing for running or cross training. And also was awarded Athlete of the Year in Long Beach, uh, in Long Beach, California for the aquatic capital of America. Um, so a huge honor. It's, it's been a, quite a ride <laughs> over the last 10 years. And uh, I don't do it to, to say, hey, look at me. I do it, I love it. I love to compete. And if you know me, you'll know that that's my passion is to compete and to also offer you the best workout I can. So that's what I'm doing here online and with you guys and well with all my members as well, trying to just have fun and, and, and stay in shape. So that's what right. one thing I want you to do is stay hydrated, you guys, get enough sleep, eat well. Okay, these are things you can control. Um, and also exercise, uh, work out every day. Whether it's rowing or running or anything like that, just stay active each day. It's the best stress reliever and everything. So, and we'll get started here on the rowing machine. So make sure your damper is uh, set three to six. Your monitor, you guys, if you're new, I want you to try watts. So I'll explain that a little bit more in detail here. I, I know I talked about watts, uh, not a lot with splits. If you're a rower, stick with splits if you're familiar with that. But if you're newer and you don't know what splits are and you're like, what are these numbers? I'll show you really quick. So uh, go to menu back, menu back just row, and then change units. Press the change units button until you get to watts, and then you can change your display until you get to a bigger number. So keep changing those things till you get to watts, and then change your display until you get to the big number so you can see it better. And you'll see a big zero in the middle. Now when I tell people is to try to hit your body weight in watts and pounds, okay? And, and it only works here and works perfectly. So if you can hit your body weight in pounds while you're rowing each stroke, that's a good first goal, I tell people. Now, if you can hit that consistently, that's the next goal. Now, if you can double that number or 50% more than your body weight, that's the next. And then double your body weight, that's the next. And if you can do that consistently, that's, that's your goal right there. And you're trying to hold those watts consistently. Now for you rowers, if you're used to splits, I will tell you this, on the national team, we did use watts a lot. Uh, Korzanowski had us using watts um, a lot. And I was like, what is this? And it w I found out it was, a, it was even more a finite measurement. The watts would go up and down by one or two or whatever. And the splits have a little more of, um, I don't wanna say, it's the same, right? But, it, it gives you a little more cushion, so you're not able to see the, the differences in strokes in power precisely. The watts will give that to you. And we're going to have some fun with watts, uh, with your uh, playing with the numbers, uh, trying to hold the numbers, and you're going to see it's freaking hard. So uh, let's get started here, and uh, I'll tell you some funny stories uh, or just some, some interesting things, perception of reality on, on the measurement with watts. So let's work with that. And let's go ahead and tie in. Um, so if you're rowing on the machine, let's set it to watts today. The higher the watts, the more calories you burn, okay? So let's go ahead and tie in. We'll tie in today, uh, just both feet, and we'll get started just warming up. So nice long strokes. If you're not having fun today, change your mind, change your attitude. It's a choice. Make it fun. Breathe. 
stay long. Warm it up. Nice couple minutes here. Breathe, pushing off. Nice and long. Three. And we'll go to the pick. Arms only here. And like we worked on yesterday, keep those knees flat, <coughs> extended, down, no bend, right? I should mention too, uh, I have, I always leave it out, I think it's just because not, it's not natural or <laughs> it's still kind of hits me when I say it. I have done the, uh, the Ultraman in Florida. I did that race last year. The Ultraman is a 321 mile race. So just go body over here, swing. It starts with a six and a half mile swim. Goes to a 270 mile bike. And then you finish with the Ultra Marathon a 52 mile run, 52.4, double, uh, double marathon run and you have three days to finish it, you have a cutoff time of 12 hours each day. People ask me, oh are you going to do the Hawaii Ultraman World Championships, I'm like hell no. But I have qualified for it, for a lifetime, so I have the decision if I want to. But you guys, again, rowing can get you the fitness for all sports, for everything, endurance, swimming, cycling, running, skiing, everything, surfing, whatever, hiking, activity, so keep on it. Let's go, box it out. So here. You guys just hold here, arms and body over, and you know, you're creating this box, okay? Again, everyone's talking about delivery these days. You're delivering a box, okay? You have to make it fit in this area, every stroke. So when you come out for that full stroke, make sure you're boxing out, okay? And you're not doing this. That's no good. You wanna make sure you're boxing out and you're allowing that area, okay? So body over. And feel the stretch, hamstrings, lower back. The cool thing about rowing is you kind of stretch as you go. So I, I always kind of enjoyed it. The war, well, not really. At Berkeley, at Cal, under Gladstone, we were going full pressure every stroke. There was no warm up. It was just full pressure every every damn stroke. But that was the competitive nature in college. Let's go quarter slide. But generally speaking, the warm-up is supposed to be a progression, a warm-up, a stretch, an active stretch. You can't stretch while you're running. You can't really stretch while you're cycling while you're doing the motion, right? Think about that. So interesting, huh? So anyway, get it going here quarter slide, 
handles by the ankles. Half slide here. Half slide. Handle at the toes. Working it out. Three quarters. Hands just past the toes. slide. Hands way past the toes. Chest up against the legs. Straight through. Good, let's go left arm only, middle finger to that metal hoop, the hand goes in between the legs, stretch out, hang, lean a little bit to the right side, do not rub the chain. Now if you're a rower and you're going What's this for? This is your outside arm drill, right? So you're hanging out. Breathe, re, uh, lean to your right side. You feel the shoulder, feel the arm straight. Right, we did this yesterday. We kind of touched the elbow, so making sure it's straight during the drive. Kick the legs. Take your right arm, take your right hand, feel your lats engage. Feel what's going on. Feel what your body is doing. Actually touch it. And you have the mirror to look at what you're doing. You see, you get to see me, you see yourself, and you're feeling what you're doing. You're using all your senses. You can even hear what you're doing. Right arm, hang out. Keep that shoulder relaxed. Again, touching your right elbow with your left hand. Keeping it straight for the hang. And then pulling it through. Or hang. Suspend the arm. Follow through. And let's go front end. Stay forward. Arm straight out. Remember that light grip. Fingers hook the handle. Give yourself another inch or so of length. 
Pull it up the slide. Shoulders relax. Chins level. Breathe. Open up. Keep those arms straight. If they're not going straight, really get them straight. Chest, legs, and body. Swing. Good. Open up. Add the arms. And back to arms only. In and out, level. Breathe. So if you notice on my machine, I have stuck white tape, electrical tape is best, at the front of the machine. You can see it. I'll show it to you when we get up front. Let's go body over here, swing, and that is to make sure my chain is going level right through that inch mark to help me level out the chain so it's not bouncing and it's not going up and down. Keep the legs down flat, stretch the hamstrings, stretch the lower back. Maintain connection, bottom of the feet. Let's go quarter slide. So just quarter and feel a little more kick. You guys, as you go through the warm up, get a little more power. You can see the watts rise. Don't go through the warm-up 20 minutes and just do the same power. The warm-up is a progression and you're trying to get a little more power as you go. That's the whole point of a warm-up. Good? Half slide. Three quarters. Full slide, lengthen out. Shin vertical, get a little longer. And we'll pause up at the catch. So pausing up at the catch, you guys can see the tape right here, about an inch, and then you can see my tape down here maybe, right there, six inches from the feet or the heels, or a few inches from the heels. You don't want to feel your seat roll up underneath you doing this one, okay? No go. Okay, not good. You don't want the handle to come up like this and then go through here. Okay, don't, I always tell people, it's a joke, but it's serious. Don't try to row when you're not actually rowing. You're rowing, but you're not actually rowing in the water. Don't try and do something you have never done before and act like you're doing it. You see what I mean? Like the movie, The Notebook, or rowing is how you think it's rowing. It's not. 
So what I tell people as a reminder, because this is what it, I'm trying to tell you. When people roll, you see kind of this. Right? Look at where my handle's going. It's going way up and way down, as if they're rowing a boat. Okay, you guys, we don't do that. The rowing is controlled, especially on the machine. The machine goes straight in and out, maybe a little bit of an oval, but not really. Okay, I mean, be efficient, straight in and out, right? Straight line is the fastest line, I'm not wrong. Okay, but also hook, hook at the catch, but the hook, you guys, watch my shoulders as I come up and down. That's how we control the height. When we actually roll, or rowers on the water, you know this, you're coming up, you're controlling the height by this part. We're not doing this. You don't see this, you see this. You see my shoulders, they don't even move. They stay level for the most part. When you get more fatigued, they'll start coming up a bit, but you want to try and keep them level. Again, Google YouTube Olympic rowing and you'll see, you'll see all the rowers shoulders sloping, relaxed as they're going and they don't even look like they're rowing hard. So use the tape to guide the handle, to guide the chain. At the front end. And know that pulling up or trying to get your shoulders into it is a bad thing. You want to relax the shoulders. Okay, hook through the left. Press off. So that perfect stroke, universally, in general, the perfect stroke. Fast hands away, shoulders relax, box it out, right? So again, fast hands away, box it out, rolling up, sliding, floating up the slide, slowing those last six inches as you approach, hooking, hook, hook the catch and go. Just as you're jumping off the ground, jump squat, boom, trying to go for a rebound against Shaquille O'Neal or any basketball player, boom, volleyball, off the sand, block, poo. Okay, you gotta get spring off the legs, you gotta get jump, you gotta get the push, you gotta get, try and break these footboards, you guys. In class one time, I was really into it, and I was like, break the footboards, get it, break them, and actually a lady broke the footboards. She actually broke them. I was like, oh no, I'm out of machine. <laughs> Unbelievable. But she did. She broke the footboard. I was like, yes. But then I was like, I have to repair that. So, um, so you want to jump through the feet, right? The ball of your foot through the entire foot, through the entire foot off the end, and really kick and get those legs down. Lead with the legs and then accelerate through the finish without trying to get more consistently accelerate through the finish, okay? But lead with the legs and press, get the knees down fast, okay? That's the perfect stroke. Again, leading with the legs, arms still out, then the rest. Really make it simple. Two parts. Don't think about three anymore, think about two, then think about one. Lead with the legs, through, and then think about one. One. One, just accelerate and try to break through the footboards. Don't come off the seat though, stay on the seat. So good job, let's stretch it out, get some water. So again, just some more helpful tips. I like to go over that, I know it's annoying every time. And I say, I've said it in more ways than one, but just that you, that's what a stroke is. It, it's over and over and over again. I asked my coach Gladstone in college, Steve Gladstone at Berkeley, Many, many times, how do I get better? How do I get better? And he tell me, he tell me, fitness, uh, your strokes, you need to be more coachable. Eventually he got kind of annoyed, I think, and I asked him, I kept asking him, how do I get better? And he said, Jack, he said, listen, 
it's going to take millions and millions of strokes. Okay? Millions and millions. And basically telling me, hey, listen, this isn't going to happen overnight. It's not going to be fixed. Just boom. You'll have a hot moments, but it takes time and patience to get things going, to get to get better at anything. And I know it's human nature. We want just we want the the silver bullet, the magic pill, right? It's not like that. So, uh, and we'll tie in both feet here. And we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna play with the watts here a little bit just to see if you're not familiar with it. You've been using splits forever. Now you're using watts. You guys, I never use calories, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, but let's just go and start with the watts and start uh, trying to hit your body weight. If you're doing that, go for double. If you're doing that, go for triple, okay? So let's go 10 on, 10 off, and start ripping those watts, start trying to get those numbers up. And we'll hold a 30, you guys. 30 strokes a minute, 10 on, 10 off. And start seeing the watts. Ready? Let's go. Push 10 at 30. Now the reason I never use calories, even though it's a measurement on the Concept 2, and no offense to Concept 2, they, they have the measurement there, but you guys ever wonder, how does it know how many calories you're burning? Everyone's different sizes, I'm 6'3", 215, 220, there may be another guy who's 5'3", or 5'4", or a little lady, you know, so you never know. How does it know? It doesn't. You guys, it's set for male, 5'8", 160 pounds. That's the setting on the concept too, just in case you learn something new today. That's the default setting for calories. Let's go 10. So that's why I don't use it, because I'm not five, eight and 160 pounds. Good. So instead of using calories, where it's totally inaccurate, unless you're 5'8", 160 pounds, then it's, at, it's pretty accurate or unless you have a watch that measures calories, which most of us do now, which is great. Calibrate those watches. But I'd say use splits or use watts, right? To use watts to find out your power because that's personal. I'm 220, so I'm trying to hold 220 watts. Maybe you're 150, you're trying to hold 150 watts. It's personal. Now you're getting really direct with the machine. You're getting direct with your power. Let's go. So for these 10 strokes, try to hit your body weight in watts. If you're already doing that, go for more. Now you learn something new every day. When you're in my class, you learn a lot. I have a lot of stories, a lot of experiences. I've met a lot of cool people in my life. I've had the uh, honor and the privilege to meet a lot of different Olympians, uh, famous other sports. Uh, pros in my and other sports I played growing up, so it's been it's been really cool talking to each one of them and getting their two cents. Let's go, push. 
10. I've met Olaf Tuthe, Matthew Pinsett, Sir Matthew Pinsett, Sir Steve Regrave, uh, not only rowers, Apollo Ono, Nadia Komenich, let's go, push 10. Natalie Coughlin, Anthony Irving, Cal Berkeley swimmer, Stacy on a stints, all gold medalists. And the list goes on. But one thing I always ask them is I ask them, what's your advice on using, what do you use for your workouts? Do you use watts? Do you use perceived exertion? Do you use calories? And every single one of these athletes I've talked to, the number one thing they use, you guys, is RPE, Rate of Perceived Exertion. So they use that as their measurement for workouts, and that's what they say is number one. Watts comes a, a close second. Watts is a close second. Heart rate is third. Calories is down the list. So Rate of Perceived Exertion is what you think is 70, 80, 90, 100% power. Really important, and only, you can only find that out by, let's go 10, by experience. Again, lots and lots of fitness, training, many hours. Good. Breathe. So on Friday we did the fitness test Friday and I did a thousand meter test or workout and I the whole class I was saying we're going to go 80-90% effort or power. Now people will say well, where is 80-90% on the machine? It's not on the machine. That's what you think is 80-90%. So this is perceived exertion, what you think, and that keeps changing. When you're getting shape and you get out of shape, that perceived exertion changes. But that is the most important part. All this, these gadgets and technology, yeah, it's great for training, but when it comes down to it, perceived exertion. You can use these tools, but use them in that order. Perceived exertion, watts, heart rate, then calories come down much further, okay? Much down the list. Let's go 10. Use splits, of course, rowers. Splits along with, for timing, right, for measurement. Thirty with watts. If you're at your body weight or you're above, try and double it on this one. Double your body weight with watts on this one. Ready? Let's go. Good. 
gotta want it. Good. Breathe and stretch. Breathe and stretch. So I know it's a lot of information, but you can always go back. This is all recorded, so you can go back and watch it. And go back and take notes if you want. And breathe, okay? So here's the game, but here's where we come into the, the different challenge with watts that I'll do with you guys here. Okay, so menu back. We're gonna set the clock for one and one. So set time for one minute work and then one minute rest. So menu back, select workout, new workout, intervals, intervals time, and then it's, you already have the set time at one. Scroll down with your arrow and go set rest to one. Now if you don't have these options, or you're on a different machine, don't worry about it. This is just to set your time, okay? It should, it, don't worry about setting exactly what we have here. Just row with us and we'll count the minute as we start and we stop. And the, the drill is, is completely different. This is just keeping the time. So on this drill, let's go check. So you set one and one, let's go and tie in. We're gonna use watts and if you've been coming to my classes, you'll know what's next, okay? We're gonna play with the watts. I want you to pick a number in your head, and we're gonna row it uh, 28, let's just call it 28, for this entire, all the pieces for the rest of the class. We're gonna set 28. And I want you to pick a number while we're rowing the first 10 seconds, pick a number in your head for your watts, and try to come plus 10 or minus 10 of that number every stroke. So you follow me? Pick a number of watts you wanna hit, plus 10 or minus 10 for the rest of the 50 seconds you're trying to hit that number. Okay, so if I wanna go out at 200, I'm trying to hit 210 to 190 within that range for the rest of the minute or for 50 seconds, every stroke. Plus 10 or minus 10 of your number, okay? This is the game. Consistency with watts. Ready? And then we'll get creative. Ready, ready, rope. So pick a number, and we're gonna call 28. So, stroke right up a bit. Okay, got your number. Hold that number. Focus, keep the stroke rate. Plus or minus 10 watts of your number. Keep it going. Focus. Good. <clears throat> Easy for a minute. Now how many of you were able to hold for that entire time plus or minus 10 of your number? I missed a few, <laughs> but if you're able to hold it, great job. But it really gets you to focus, right? Now you're honed in. Oh, I want to hit that number. It's your challenge, okay, to be consistent. Let's do it again. Same thing. Same number if you want. If you want to change it, you can. But try to pick a number in those first 10 seconds you want to hit, then plus or minus 10. And hold the 28 stroke rate though. Focus in. Here we go, start the minute. 28. On the rate. Follow me. You got your number. Pick your number. 
Let's go. Plus or minus 10. Better. That was better. I think I missed one stroke. If you got it, great job. If you didn't, keep working at it. Maybe you got better on that one. It's a feel. You're feeling what you're doing every stroke. You're trying to copy that same sensation, trying to nail that number, that specific number. Okay, you guys ready for the next challenge? Plus or minus five. Plus or minus five. Now you gotta really focus. If you haven't, if you're not comfortable with that, just keep it plus or minus 10. Or if you're just beginning, maybe plus or minus 20. There's levels, right? We'll go to advanced for the people that are out there for the challenge, plus or minus five watts of that number. So pick a number on your watts and let's go plus or minus five right here at 28 plus or minus five. Now I know what you're thinking, because I'm thinking the same. The machine's broken. It's the machine's fault. It's not reading exactly what it's doing. The battery's dying. I don't care what your excuse is, they're all wrong. The machine does not make mistakes. You guys, they give scholarships based off these machines. Full ride for women and men to colleges based off your times off this particular machine. It does not make mistakes. That means you are the one making the mistake. Sorry, but that's the, it's the truth. It's funny because it's true. So you have to create, uh, correct your technique. Let's go again. If you're not hitting that 10 again, go for five or vice versa. Go challenge yourself within five watts. Let's go 28. Pick a number. Pick that number. Steady. Second thing is,
you're probably getting tired and your numbers are falling off during the last half of the minute or the last 20 seconds. The numbers are faltering more, right? That's called fatigue, okay? That happens to every rower, but you have to fight it. You have to keep going and keep your composure. Whatever it takes. Focus 10, breathe 10. Keep it going, you don't stop. There is no rest, you gotta fight through it. Again, 28. If you're beginner, hold within 20 watts, plus or minus 20. If you're intermediate, plus or minus 10. If you're advanced, plus or minus five. Let's go, in 10 seconds, pick, pick your number. At 28, strokes a minute. Let's go. Really get better. Focus in. Connection. Good. Good job, getting better. Okay. You might be wondering, <laughs> how then do you get plus or minus five? How do you keep those numbers consistent? Millions and millions of strokes besides that? Watching these classes? Besides that, you guys, on a more serious matter, connection. If you miss the connection up here, if you miss the catch, if your legs are going, if your body's going, if you're grabbing, if you're kicking, any little different sequence there at the catch, no matter what you do at the finish, if you feel like you're pulling hard and finishing the finish, you're not going to get that number. You missed it. It's like hitting a foul ball or a slice, a shank in golf. You missed it. So don't complain to the machine. Complain at your stroke. Again, 28, pick your number one more time with this drill, with this set, 28, focus in. Here we go, pick a number. Plus or minus five watts. Connection, hook. Fatigue is coming. Fight it. Good. Okay. Now for the ultimate challenge. For you rowers, you know what's coming next, right? See how many times you can hit your number exactly, consistently. And I'll tell you something after, after we do this. But try to see how many times you can hit your number exactly, on the dot. How many times in a row can you hit that number? We're going to have a couple chances at this, a couple minutes, but let's see on your first one. Pick a number and try to see how many times in a row you can hit it exactly on the dot. Don't keep changing that number. Try to hit that number. Stay with it. 28. Here we go. Breathe. Focus. 
pick your number. Now, Good. You have a ha aha moment going, what the hell? How is that possible? Well, I only hit it three times in a row, but I will tell you this. If you think it's not possible, I rode with a guy, I think, I think it was Mike Worley on the national team. I got to camp. At uh, the national team, my first week, Mike really was doing a 30 minute piece next to me. I go, do you mind if I join in? Yeah. What are you doing? Oh, just 30 minutes steady state to 280, I think it was 280 watts. At that time, it was easy on the national team. First 10 minutes go by, he's using watts, I saw mine. I got like 300, 260, 270. Let's go again. 10 minutes in, I'm looking over his machine, he's right at 280, right at 280. The last 10 minutes, I'm staring at his machine, you guys. The watts do not move. They stay right at 280. I'm not kidding you. Right at the same number, every single stroke. So what I am telling you is, it is possible. I have seen it. It's nuts. It's crazy. Of course, it's the highest level of the sport. But I'm telling you, that's how we know it's the machine. And not you. The machine is reading exactly what you're doing. Go one more you guys last one let's try and go harder this time at a 30 and try and keep it within 10 okay plus or minus 10 why is this important let's go because when you're rowing in a boat especially in a sweep boat if you're pulling different power ah, going to the race guess what's going to happen to the boat it's going to go sideways, it's going to steer. That's why it's important. 30, let's take it up. Last one, 20 strokes. Stretch. 
Breathe, get some water. Great job, you guys. Good work. Enjoy the rest of your day. Make sure you stretch. Lots of water. Eat something within 45 minutes. <laughs>